Some drugs are heroes, some are villains. Then there are drugs that are misunderstood. One of those are steroids. Steroids is an umbrella term, which can mean the hormone or its synthetic variants. It can be anabolic steroids or mineral corticoids or glucocorticoids, etc. Our focus is on glucocorticoids, mainly the management of patients under glucocorticoid therapy. Hello and welcome to the Scalpel Speaks. For the rest of the video, we will use the term steroids to mean the drugs acting as glucocorticoids. Now steroids are literal lifesavers. I know there are adverse effects, but still they are lifesavers. As you might remember from our previous video on metabolic response that our body is a clumsy warrior. In order to fight infections or dealing with trauma, it can hurt itself fatally. Steroids can help us modulate the response and that is probably the most important application in surgery. Now if a patient is under steroids for long term due to other medical conditions, there is a chance of adrenal insufficiency. And if we have to operate on such patients, we need some modifications. And that's the centerpiece of this video. So let's get to some basics. Endogenous glucocorticoids such as cortisol are secreted by the adrenal cortex and there is significant rise in release of cortisol in stress such as trauma. This is regulated by hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. The hypothalamus secretes corticotropin releasing factor or CRF which stimulates the anterior pituitary to secrete adrenal corticotropic hormone or ACTH which in turn stimulates the adrenal cortex to secrete cortisol. Now this has a negative feedback mechanism. Cortisol has an inhibitory effect on the release of CRF and ACTH and this regulates the level of cortisol. Now if a patient under steroids such as prednisolone, these exogenous steroids exert the same inhibitory effect and can suppress the responsiveness of the HPA axis which causes adrenal insufficiency. In these cases, the body cannot produce the additional cortisol to combat the stress and the situation can progress to adrenal crisis which is potentially fatal. Now just to be clear, there are tons of uses for steroids and there are many other causes of adrenal crisis but those are beyond the scope of this video. We know our videos are getting kind of long so we will try to focus only on managing patients under long-term steroids requiring elective procedures. One thing we have to know is the dose equivalence of different steroid drugs, which is here in this chart. According to this chart, 10 mg of prednisolone is equivalent to 40 mg of hydrocortisone and so on. Now we jump straight into the problem. Not all patients who are under steroids has HP axis suppression. There are some objective tests such as these. But these tests are costly, some are uncomfortable and not really available. These tests are usually used in cases of other adrenal insufficiencies such as Addison's disease etc. So we have to rely on subjective parameters such as dose of steroids, duration of the course etc. The specific duration and dose of steroid that can produce HP axis suppression is controversial. In patients taking steroids for less than 3 weeks, suppression of HPA axis rarely happens. But patient who has received the equivalent of 15 mg per day of prednisolone for more than 3 weeks should be suspected of having HPA suppression. The recovery time of normal HPA axis varies from 2 to 5 days to 9 to 12 months after discontinuation of steroid therapy. But the ability to respond to stress returns by 2 months. Original recommendations for preoperative steroid supplementation were in excess of what was actually required, known as supraphysiologic dosing. Newer recommendations stated that there is no advantage in supraphysiologic glucocorticoid prophylaxis during surgical stress. The present approach is to replace the amount equivalent to normal physiologic response to surgical stimuli. One of the widely practiced protocols for steroid supplements in preoperative setting is given by Salem et al, popularly known as the Salem protocol. Patients who have stopped taking steroids within last 3 months 
should be considered as patients on steroids and supplementation should be made accordingly. Patients who have stopped steroids more than 3 months back do not require any perioperative steroid supplementation. On the other hand, patients taking steroids for less than 10 mg per day of prednisolone equivalent are assumed to have normal HPA response and they do not need any steroid cover. So patients taking more than 10 mg equivalent of prednisone for more than 3 weeks anytime in the last 3 months are thought to have HP axis suppression and needs steroid cover. Now we need to determine the amount of steroid needed that is dictated by the surgical stress. Most outpatient dental procedure and minor surgical procedures have negligible stress response and no steroid cover is needed for that. Minor surgical stress such as inguinal, herniography, appendectomy, dental procedures of more than 1 hour duration under local anesthesia, caesarean section, etc. needs 25 mg equivalent of hydrocortisone during induction in addition to the existing dose and the required intraoperative dose of steroid as per the anesthetist. Moderate surgical stress such as non-laparoscopic cholecystectomy, abdominal hysterectomies, lower limb revascularization, segmental colon resections, etc. need 25 mg of hydrocortisone at induction with 100 mg per day for 24 hours with the existing dose and the required intraoperative dose. Severe surgical stress such as Whipple's resection, esophagectomy, pituitary adenectomy, total proctocolectomy, liver resection, cardiopulmonary bypass, dental procedures under general anesthesia, orthognathic surgery, severe facial traumas, etc. They need 25 mg hydrocortisone at induction with 100 mg per day for 40 to 72 hours in addition to the existing dose and the required intraoperative dose. Patients on high dose immunosuppressive steroids should be continued on usual immunosuppressive dose during perioperative period. Another regimen is to give 100 mg of hydrocortisone followed by 100 mg 6 to 8 hours for 24 hours in minor cases and in major cases 100 mg 6 to 8 hours for 72 hours. In addition to these, stress reduction protocols should be followed which includes preoperative anxiolytics, early morning appointment as during that time body cortisol levels are usually higher. Keep in mind that long term steroids will have an immunosuppressive effect and antibiotics should be prescribed accordingly. Also be cautious while prescribing NSAIDs as steroids precipitate the risk of GI ulceration. The chance of a patient under steroids developing adrenal crisis is rare but not unheard of. We need to acknowledge the problem and modify the treatment rather than ignore it. However, we have to make sure to prevent overzealous corrections. We have provided this link of our sources in the description and don't forget to like, share and subscribe.